Hello, my dear friends and net aspirants. Welcome back to our channel, High Point. I hope you are doing great in your life. And you have seen my previous video about uh, uh, Thomas Wyatt and the Earl of Surrey. So I hope you have got some information out of my videos. So today we are going to learn about Bible translations of Age of Revival. Before going into the video, let me remind you about my website known as www.highpoint in which you will find 900 plus audio lectures related to NTA, UGC, Net, English, Language and Literature and also 300 plus downloadable PDFs and also previous and practice questions which you can attempt live in the website and know your progress in the form of marks instantly after you finish the exam and you can also join a whatsapp group in which i'll share uh, daily quizzes related to english language and literature and also some notes related to it and the updates and news related to a n t a u g c net uh, English language and literature. So I hope you will if you are interested you can join it and you so let's begin the content of this video This is going to be a very short video because it's only talking about Bible translations of age of revival I'm not talking about Bible translation as such happened it happened throughout the history but Bible translations happened in the age of revival because it is uh, It was a major event happened there. So after age of revival we can See that in uh, the in the previous ages uh, ages as well as in the coming ages like especially in Jacobian era King James Bible is there so such uh, details I'm not talking about here but Bible translation that happened and things related to Bible tra translations happened during the age of revival is uh, particularly discussing in this uh, video okay let's begin so this is the uh, sum total of what I'm going to tell uh, so I have given uh, a table about it. You can easily see the years and the details related to that years as well as Bible translation of Age of Revival is concerned. So if you have uh, a pen and notebook, you can take down these uh, things as uh, your notes. Then uh, let me begin. First event happened in the year that is related to Bible translation of the Age of Revival happened in the year 1525. So here we can see that William Tyndale, two persons, especially two persons, you have to remember in this uh, particular age related to Bible translation, they are William Tyndale and Miles Coverdale. So do remember these people belongs to belong to which age? The age of revival and also they are related to the Bible translation of the age. So William Tyndale's New Testament is completed. So here in this year, uh, 1525 William Tyndale's New Testament is completed and his translation is based on the Latin Vulgate Erasmus Greek and the original Greek manuscript so he based his translation on these things Latin Vulgate Erasmus Greek translation and original Greek manuscripts okay so William Tyndale based his translation of New Testament is based on these things Erasmus Greek original Greek manuscripts and the Latin Vulgate so after 1525, in the year 1535, Miles Coverdale, another person, Miles Coverdale, a student of Tyndale. So Miles Coverdale, he was a student of Tyndale. Uh, he produced the first complete English Bible. So you have to remember this point. It is very, very important. I have seen several questions related to Miles Coverdale. So in 1535, Miles Coverdale produced the first complete English Bible. Okay. And in... Uh, in the next year, 1536, Tyndale was arrested and later executed for heresy. Okay, see, during that time, uh, the clergy, the religious people, the, uh, the uh, people related to church and the royalty, they were not happy with these kind of uh, translation of Bible from Latin, from classical languages uh, to English. They were not in much favor of such kind of attempts. So, easily these people, they get those who attempts uh, to... Uh, translate uh, Bible they they will easily get the uh, you know easily get some uh, you know they will get arrested or they'll get uh, uh, punished for such attempts so Tyndale was also get arrested and later executed for heresy and he did not live to complete his Old Testament translation but he was translating it was in process but he finished New Testament uh, but he could not live uh, to complete his Old Testament uh, Old Testament translation uh, because, because before that he arrested he got arrested and he was later executed for heresy in the year 1537 what happened Matthew's Bible printed 
Matthew's Bible was Tyndale's translation supplemented by Coverdale's translation. So a person called, known as Matthew, uh, he printed a Bible. Actually, uh, Matthew's Bible was Tyndale's translation and it was supplemented by Coverdale's translation. So Coverdale was uh, Tyndale's student only. So Matthew's translation was Tyndale's translation supplemented by Coverdale's translation. And Thomas Matthew was an assumed name. So Thomas Matthew was just an assumed name that had actually been uh, used by Tyndale. So when Tyndale was writing and publishing and printing his uh, uh, his Bible translations, he used uh, Thomas Matthew. But in the year 1536 itself, he died. He was executed. But you know when his uh, translation got published. They use the name, author's name as Thomas Matthew. But Thomas Matthew, it is it was just an assumed name that had actually used by Tyndale. Okay, Tyndale used this name, Th uh, Thomas Matthew. It was just an assumed name by Tyndale. And this Bible was actually printed by John Rodgers. Rodgers. Okay, so John Rodgers translated, uh, sorry, printed this Bible, actually printed uh, Tyndale's Bible. And uh, uh, the Bible was known as Thomas Matthew's Bible, but actually Thomas Matthew is a name which was assumed by Tindale. Okay. And in the year 1539, Thomas Cranmer, the Archbishop of Canterbury, hired Miles Coverdale at the bequest of King Henry VIII to publish the Great Bible. So this is another thing. So Tindale, uh, Tindale sorry. Miles Coverdale already produced the first complete English Bible in the year 1535. Okay, remember that year and uh, the name Miles Coverdale. Okay, so but in the year 1539, Thomas Cranmer, Thomas Cranmer, uh, he was the Archbishop of Canterbury. He hired Miles Coverdale uh, as uh, King Henry the Eighth requested Archbishop of Canterbury Thomas Cranmer uh, to you know, publish a great Bible. So, for that mission, Archbishop of Canterbury hired Miles Coverdale. And it became the first English Bible authorized for public use. So, this became the first authorized English Bible for public to use. So, you have to remember that Miles Coverdale produced the first complete English Bible in the year 1535. That is not the authorized Bible. That was the translation made by Miles Coverdale. But in the year 1539, you know, uh, again, under the leadership of Miles Coverdale, you know, what happened? English, first English Bible, authorized version of English Bible came into being. Hmm? As requested by King Henry VIII to publish a great Bible. And in 1546, Jerome's Latin Vulgate version of the Bible is declared to be the official version of the Bible accepted by the Catholic Church. So, a little bit variations are there. But still, you have to remember each point clearly. Okay, here Miles Coverdale completes the uh, first English Bible, his first English Bible, produced the first English Bible. But here you can see that uh, it is the first English Bible authorized for public use in the year 1539. But in the year 1546, Jerome's Latin Vulgate, Jerome's Latin Vulgate version of the Bible is declared, that version of the Bible. Jerome's Latin Vulgate, that version of the Bible is declared to be the official version of the Bible accepted by the Catholic Church. And we all know that the age of revival ends in 1550. So these are some of the major developments as far as Bible translation is concerned happened during the age of uh, revival. So uh, before and after many other events happened, many other developments happened as far as uh, Bible translation is concerned. But in the in the age of revival, these are some of the major events happened in relation with the translation of the Bible. So do remember these years and the na two major names, Miles Coverdale and William Tyndale associated with the Bible translation. Okay, I hope that was clear enough. Now, yeah, that's all. I already told you this is going to be a very short video uh, and I have made it precise for that. You can take it down if you want to. You can post the video and you can write it down if you want, if you are taking notes. So if you have any queries, questions and suggestions related to Bible translations of Bible uh, in the age of revival, uh, you can always comment and uh, ask in the comment section. And if you want me to make any further videos related to any other 
contents related to English language and literature. Do mention that in the comment section as well. And do go and visit my website. You can have a look at it. And you can yourself know that how we are arranged all these things for you. And uh, you can have a glimpse of what all you have to study and what all you have to give more importance to. And also you can join the WhatsApp group. The link is there in the description box. And you can click on the link and join the WhatsApp group uh, where... Uh, notes and uh, information related to English language and literature will be shared and that's all for now let me thank you for watching my video and if you like my video press the like button and also share this to your share this to your friends and family those who are in need and if you have yet not subscribed to my channel please do subscribe and support me for making more videos like this so that's all thank you bye bye